Hey, welcome back to Cheaper Jeeper TV. I'm Dino, your host. Glad to see you here. You're a conscientious Jeep owner. You want to maintain your Jeep. You have a look in the owner's manual. Seems logical enough. Then you realize at the dealership they have different service intervals. What do you do? Well, stick around in this week's Cheaper Jeeper TV because we're going to discuss that as well as some other money saving tips. Stay tuned. So the differences in the maintenance schedules can be explained for by the differences in people's intentions and use of their Jeeps. Some people may just intend to lease the Jeep and do the bare minimum maintenance required as per lease agreement. Other people's intentions may be to hang on to the Jeep for the long term. Then there's different types of uses where you have the severe off-roaders who do rock crawling and mudding and river crossings and the other types of users where it's not so severe there might be some light duty off-road on forestry roads when they go fishing and hunting well this video will look at the maintenance schedule for somebody who's intending to hang on to their jeep long term and has moderate intensity in terms of their off-road use so you will find different maintenance schedules that have different maintenance intervals i'm going to share with you one that i found from the dealer where I purchased my Jeep. The link to the schedule will be included in the description section below and I'm just going to show you how I use it and some changes I've made to make the whole process a little simpler. Let's take a look. So here we are at the unique Chrysler online maintenance schedule. Click on Jeep and then you can find the Wrangler down at the bottom and you can see when you select 2018 that you also have the JK models in the schedule because they were still manufactured in 2018 but you go and select your JL with whichever transmission and engine you had look at the full schedule and there you can have it all on one page the full maintenance schedule color-coded based on the type of service required but if you click on the odometer reading you can now look and zoom in closer and you could see that you could just look at the schedule by time or by actual kilometerage and say you look at the 8,000 kilometer service you could see the details of what's involved with the service as well as part numbers and you zoom out of there and go back and you could take a look at maybe the 32,000 kilometer service and you could see with this there's a little bit more involved with that service and you could look at the details if you look at the website so we'll zoom out of that and have a look at how I've organized the schedule to help you see the overall pattern of maintenance. So let's look at how I've organized this same schedule to help see the overall pattern. For example, every 8,000 kilometers, there's to be an oil change, a tire rotation, and a brake inspection. Now that doesn't mean brake service. A brake inspection is where you would inspect the brakes to see that the brake pads are wearing evenly and that there's enough material on them. So that isn't something that you need to pay somebody to do every 8,000 kilometers because it'll be quite a while before you would need service. And it would also be dependent on your driving habits. So to Pay somebody to do the inspection kind of is something you could do yourself. The dealership will charge $167 plus tax for this 8,000 kilometer interval service or 5,000 miles. So that would certainly make this service an area that is open for a DIY money saving opportunity. An actual dollar savings breakdown is shared in the tips feature later in this video. The next cyclical service occurs at every 32,000 kilometers and that is the cabin air filter. Let's look right now at how simple it is to change the cabin air filter. So you open up the glove box, pull up on the damper lever and push up on the tab and the door opens. Inside the opening is a little panel that you remove to access the filter. You pinch the filter with your fingers to pull it out because the filter is a little wider than the opening so you just squeeze it like an accordion and tug it out. You put the new filter back in with the airflow arrows pointing down, squeeze it in to the smaller opening and then maneuver it in to ensure that it is seated properly. 
then you put the door panel back on by inserting it into the right hand side and snapping it in place. So that's it. Once you have it replaced, this just snaps in and you take the little lever over here and put it back into the hole and press down till it snaps. And you're done. That's as easy as it is. The cabin air filter is something that you should look at every 32,000 kilometers. Again, depending on your driving conditions, if you're in a really dusty area, you may want to have a look at it sooner. And after seeing how easy it is to do it yourself, you can easily inspect it and or change it anytime. The next interval for maintenance is every 48,000 kilometers or so where you would inspect and change the oil in your transfer case and your differentials. This is something that can easily be done as a DIY if you were interested in saving money there. And then the next cycle would be every 96,000 kilometers where you would do the engine air filter. Now that is something I would check by 96,000 kilometers, but you can check it anytime you're under the hood. It's just a matter of removing four bolts and looking at the filter because it is dependent on the environment you're driving in. If you're in a very dusty environment, you may want to look at it a little sooner. Now, everything that we've looked at up to this point is something that I've done myself on my own Jeep and saved all that labor cost. Now, when it comes to the cycle that occurs at every 160,000 kilometers, that's the changing of the spark plugs in the PCV valve. That is likely something I'll have done at the dealer because although it is DIY possible, it does involve removal of some hoses and fuel rails, and that's not something I'm confident enough to do myself. And finally, every 240,000 kilometers is the service where you change your engine coolant. So hopefully you have a good sense of what maintenance schedule will help meet your needs and you have a good sense of what items you could possibly do yourself as a DIY and save some money, but also the sense of satisfaction and peace of mind that comes with maintaining your own Jeep. But let's move on to our tips feature to get a better understanding of what kind of money savings we're talking about. Now for some cheaper Jeeper tips. The 8,000 kilometer maintenance interval involves the changing of the oil, the rotating of the tires, and the inspection of the brakes. To do this service, the dealer will charge $167 Canadian. Essentially, other than labor, the only material costs involved for this service are the Mopar oil filter, which is around $10, and then the 0W20 Pennzoil with the Chrysler MS6395 spec, which can be found regularly on sale as it is this very day for $31. This brings a total DIY cost for the service to $41. So if you take a look at doing the 8,000 kilometer DIY service yourself, you will have a savings of $126. So if you drive about 24,000 kilometers per year, which is reasonable, that's 15,000 miles, the savings can become 378 Canadian. Then if you keep your Jeep for 10 years, your savings is $3,780. That's a lot of money that you could save and buy other things for your Jeep. But some of you may have warranty concerns, especially during the first three year bumper to bumper warranty or the first 60,000 kilometers. Well, some dealers offer an express oil change service for $25. They'll accept the oil that you bring and filter that you bring and between their labor and environmental fees, it'll come out to with taxes about $25. So that leaves you still with a savings of $101 if you do the tire rotations and inspection of the brakes yourself. So if you drive about 24,000 kilometers a year, your savings becomes $303 a year or over 10 years, still you're over $3,000 savings by doing that. That's just if you look at doing the 8,000 kilometer services on your own, not even talking about the other ones. So whether it's for DIY oil changes, tire rotations, brake inspections, there will be a Cheaper Jeeper TV DIY video with amateur tips coming soon. So make sure you subscribe and then click the notification bell so you don't miss out. And now for subscribers tips. 
So here's a tip from one of our subscribers. Hey Cheaper Jeeper TV, nice YouTube channel. Also, one thing when rotating your tires, make sure to torque the lugs again after 25 to 50 kilometers of driving, especially on alloy wheels. Signed, Gary. Hey Gary, thanks a lot. We appreciate the tip and we'll make sure we incorporate that in our DIY videos. Well, that's it for this week's Cheaper Jeeper TV, where we help you get the most for your money so that you can get the most for your Jeep. We hope you enjoyed the show. See you next week. Take care.